Introduction to linear to systems of linear equations. What does that mean? You're going to be given in this section, you're going to be given two equations by two unknowns, basically linear, like x plus y equals 7, and another one, x minus y equals 3. And the question, can you find the solution to these equations? What does that mean, can you find the solution? Can you find a point, a point, that if you plug in the value for x and y, it will, this equation will be correct, so is this. I'm looking at this in my head quickly. I think the answer x equals to 5, y equals to 2. Why? When x is 5, what's 5 plus 2? 7. 7, is that equal to 7? Mm -hmm. Yes. What's 5 minus 2? 3, does it equal to 3? Yeah. Yes, so that point actually satisfies both of these. So how do you find what that point is? How do we find what the point is? Like if I didn't give you that point, so can you tell me what the answer is? You can actually do that multiple ways. One of them is solved by graphing. And that's why I'm using graph paper. So if I look at this, solve by graphing, let me just go to the side here. Okay, this is the x-axis, the y-axis. Let me take the first equation, x plus y equals to 7, and graph it. We just had a test on that. And if you remember, I said to you, if I have x and y on the same side, me personally, I like to solve it by finding the x and the y-intercept. What's the x-intercept? And what is the y-intercept? The x-intercept, you do what? You let y be 0. And the y-intercept, you let what? x be 0. So let's let y be 0, you have what? x equals to 7. So the point is 7 comma 0. This one you let x be 0. So 0 plus y, which is y equals to 7. That point is going to be what? 0 comma 7, very good. So let's find these points, 7 comma 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's this point. That's 7 comma 0. 0 comma 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's nice to use a graph paper. And when I connect the two points here, this is the graph of x plus y equals 7. Now let me graph the second equation. The second one is what? x minus y equals 3. Again, I'll do the x and the y intercept. You let y be 0. The y intercept. You let x be 0. If we let y be 0 here, x equals what? 3. That's 3 comma 0. 1, 2, 3, 3 comma 0 is right here. To get the y-intercept, you let x be 0. That's negative y equals 3, which means y equals what? Negative 3. That's 0 comma negative 3. There's my two points. Connect them. This is x minus y equals 3. And we say, what is the solution? Where does the two graphs, the two lines, intersect each other? 
what is this x value? And what is this y value? That's where they cross each other, at this point. So x is what? One, two, three, four, five. And the y value is what? Two. And that's the answer we're looking for. So when they say find the solution to this, it's five comma two. If they give you the point and they said, is this point a solution? And the way you test it, you plug it in. If you end up with yes and yes, then that point is a solution. It has to be yes to both of them. It can't be just yes to one of them. For example, for this one, they might say, is six and one a solution? X is six, Y is one. Well, what's six plus one? Seven, that's a yes here. But what is six minus one? Five, that's a no, it's not equal. So that point is not a solution. So to be a solution has to be yes and yes to both of these. Let's try another one. Three X minus Y equals to two. And the other equation, 3x minus y equals to 4. Find the solution. Again, let me do my graph here. And let me graph the first one. The first equation, I'm going to use this one. 3x minus y equals to 2. And again, you're going to see me. Anytime I have x and y on the same side, go with the intercept. The x-intercept, I'm going to let y equals to 0. If y is 0, we have what? 3x minus 0, which is 3x equals to 2. x equals what? 2 thirds, right? So the point is 2 thirds comma 0. The y-intercept, you let x be 0. When x is 0, that's 0 minus y, which is negative y equals to 2. That means y equals what? Negative 2. Negative two. Very good. So 0 comma negative 2. Here is the problem with this method. This is where I don't like it. 2 thirds and 0. Where's the 2 thirds? If this is 1, where's the 2 thirds? Your guess is good as mine, exactly. So it sometimes it doesn't give you the exact answer. You in the neighborhood. So somewhere here, the two thirds, you know? Zero and negative two, that's right here. And if, if I connect the two points, That's the graph. I always like to write the name of the equation on top of it. This way, when I'm looking at them, I know which one is which. This is 3x minus y equals 2, that blue line. And now, let me do this equation. 3x minus y equals to 4. Let me do the x-intercept and the y-intercept, too. The x-intercept, we let y equals to 0. So you have 3x minus nothing, which is 3x equals 4. x equals what? 4 over 3. 
So the point is four third comma zero. The y intercept you let x equals to zero. Negative y equals four, y equals negative four. That's zero comma negative four. So let's see where these points are. Four thirds, that's somewhere, oh, one and one third, I'm sorry, that's closer to the one. And negative four, right? That's right here. And when you connect the two points here, the two lines, looks like I missed the dot there, but this is 3x minus y equals to 4. The question is, what's the solution? The solution, where do they cross each other? They don't. They don't. These are parallel lines. So this problem has no solution. Why? The two lines are parallel. That means you will never find one point. There is not a single point out there in space that if you replace x and y by the numbers, this will be true and that will be true. There is nothing. So this problem has no solution. So you could have one point for an answer, like the previous one. You could have no solution like this one. Let's try another one. Maybe you have more than one point sometimes. Let's say we have 2x minus 2y equals to 6. And the other value, y equals x minus 3. Again, let me set my x and y axes already. These are not point, that's just a smudge from before. Do I have a white out? I can get rid of them. So let's see, let me take the first equation. Again, I have x and y on the same side. I'm gonna stick with my method. The x and the y intercept. The y intercept. X intercept, you let y be zero. When y is zero, you have two x minus nothing equals 6, which means x equals what? 3. So the point 3 comma 0. The y-intercept, you let x be 0. If x is 0, this piece is gone. Negative 2y equals 6, which means y equals what? negative 3, so that point is 0, comma, negative 3. Let's find the two points and graph them. 3 and 0, that's this one. 0 and negative 3, that's this one. That's this one. So that's 2x minus 2y equals 6.
Now, what about the other equation? I can still do the x and the y intercept, but usually I don't use the x and the y intercept when I have something like this. When I have y equals, I either use the slope intercept or picking points. If you pick points for x, you can use any value that you want to. Pick a 1, pick a 2, pick a 5. Doesn't matter what you use. Two are enough, but I'll do three just to be on the safe side. When x is 1, what is 1 minus 3? When x is 2, what is 2 minus 3? When x is 5, what's 5 minus 3? 2. two. Jamie's awake this morning. Okay. 1 and minus 2. That's right here. 2 and minus 1. Right here. 5 and 2. Right here. When you connect them, what happens? Same line. So we have the same line. So what's the solution here? We have an infinite solution. We have infinitely many solutions. Why? Every point on the line is a solution. But here's the problem. If you go infinite solution, if somebody comes in and says, the solution is infinite, I might think any point out there is a solution. Well, is this point a solution? No. Is that point a solution? No. No, no, no. So what do you mean by infinite solution? So to make sure people know what you mean, you go, it's a set y such that, and you write one of these equations in it y equals x minus 3, meaning what? Any point that satisfies this will also satisfy that one. You can write either equation in it. So we have infinite solution, and you take one of the equations and you put it down to let people know that any point that will satisfy this will also satisfy the other one. So when you have the same line, you have infinite solution. So these are the three possible outcomes when you solve a system of equations. There is no other possibilities. It could be one point like this. It could be no solution when they're parallel like this one. Or it could be an infinite solution like this one. There's no other cases. It's not they cross at two points. These are straight lines. Straight lines will never cross at only two points. It's either only one point, no point, or many points. That's the many points, when they're on top of each other. As I said, the problem with this method, let me give you one here, see if you can find the solution to it. I'll make one up. I'll actually have you make one up with me. Go ahead, somebody give me x and y, a number for x. Four. Four x. I use minus, another number. Six. Six y equals, give me a number. Uh, four. Four, okay. Let's try another one. Go ahead, a number. Eight. Eight x plus three. Three y equals. Twelve. Twelve, okay. So Jamie gave me these numbers. We're going to find the solution to that. I'll be really upset if the points cross at perfect spot. I don't want it to cross a perfect spot. Get the stuff out. Come on. There we go. Let's take this equation. 4x minus 6y equals 4. Again, x and y intercept. Okay. 
the x-intercept we let y be zero. So if you let y be zero, this piece is gone. 4x equals what? 4x equals 2, 1. So the point is 1 comma 0. Right here. The y-intercept, you let x be 0. So x is gone. Negative 6y equals what? 4. Y equals 4 over negative 6. We know that's a negative. Is that 2 thirds? Can you simplify it? So 0 and negative 2 thirds. 2 thirds is right here. Less than 1. Negative. So I'll connect the two points. And that's the graph of 4x minus 6y equals 4. Now let's graph the second equation. That's the 8x here plus 3y equals 12. x-intercept y-intercept. The x-intercept, we let y be 0. So y is gone. 8x equals what? 12. x equals 12 over 8. And 12 over 8, if you simplify it, that's 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 and the y is 0. The y-intercept, you let x be 0. x is gone. 3y equals 12. y equals what? 4. So that would be what? 0, comma, 4. Zero comma four. One, two, three, four. That's this point. Three halves, that's more than one and a half and zero. That's right here. Isn't that negative four? Uh where? Which one? <coughs> oh yeah. Did I say oh sorry, zero four. Yep, thank you. One, two, three, four. Yep, perfect. Plus 4, not a negative 4. 0, 4 is on the top. Now, when you connect the two points here, this is the answer to that. So this is what? Uh, 8x. 8x plus 3y equals 12. Now, what's the solution to this? This is the y value. And this is the x value. This is a disadvantage of this method. If I'm looking for accuracy, what is that number? Well, it looks like more than one. Is it one and a half? I know it's not one and a half because that dot was the half. So it becomes a guessing game. Somewhere probably around 1.3, I don't know, the x value. And the y value, is that a 0 0.4, 0 0.5? What do you think? Your guess is as good as mine. I might say 0 0.4. And because of that reason, because if you're looking for exact value, this written approximation, people don't like this method. It works fine till we hit a problem like this. Then it says, oh, we got a little problem here. We're not sure exactly what that number. So how do we fix that? Again, I'm looking for the exact answer. How would I get the exact answer there? Well, let's look and see. Is there another technique maybe I can use that will give me the exact answer? And the answer to that is yes. 
and let's change video